Hello everyone. In this video, I will walk through the paper, Grokking Beyond Neural Networks, which I co-wrote with Charles O'Neill and Tang Bui. Let's first define grokking. This is a phenomenon originally found in the accuracy curves of neural networks. It is characterized by a significant gap between the performance of the network on a training set drawn in blue when compared to a validation set drawn in red. The difference in timing between these two curves is known as the grokking gap, or delta k. In our paper, we demonstrate three important properties of grokking. Number one, grokking occurs outside of neural networks. In fact, it can be found in Gaussian process regression, Gaussian process classification, and linear regression. Number two, one can induce grokking via a particular data augmentation technique. Specifically, if you append random bits to input examples, one sees a reliable increase in grokking. Number three, there exists a coherent hypothesis which seems to explain grokking in cases where explicit regularization is present and needed for grokking to occur. In all previous studies of grokking, the phenomenon has only been analyzed in the context of neural network architectures and linear models. However, we have found that grokking can also occur in other contexts. Consider a Gaussian process classification task. Suppose we wish for the GP to classify the parity of a given set of bits, let's say three. However, we also add a set of additional random bits to the three relevant dimensions. Given a set of labeled examples, we can then tune the hyperparameters of the GP via SGD. If one does so, one reliably sees grokking across different random initializations. In the previous example, we were inherently using a data augmentation technique we call concealment. In concealment, one considers example vectors used by a given model. Then, one adds to the original task a set of random bits. In the paper, we show that as one increases the number of these bits, the grokking gap also increases. Furthermore, for the range of values we tested, the trend appeared to be exponential. In most cases of grokking studied, the loss function used for optimization includes a data fit term and a regularization term. Concurrently to the publication of our paper, it was shown that one could relax the need for the regularization term in neural networks. However, we find for many of our settings, an explicit regularization term is needed. Take for example, GP regression on a noisy sine wave. In this case, the negative marginal log likelihood the value we try to minimize can be decomposed into two terms. The first term represents the data fit, while the second term represents a complexity penalty. Let us examine the landscapes for these two terms with regard to the kernel hyperparameters. Note that the x-axis on each heat map is a log output scale, and the y-axis is the length scale. A darker shade of red is indicative of a better model according to the criterion of the heat map. As we can see, the data fit landscape has a basin of attraction for large output scale, but for relatively small length scale. Alternatively, the complexity is large for small length scales and large output scales. Let's track how three different initializations evolve in the landscape. It is trajectory B, initialized in a region of low error, high complexity, which exhibits grokking. This observation leads us to hypothesize a possible mechanism for grokking. One will get grokking, in cases where explicit regularization is needed, if low error, high complexity solutions are relatively accessible, but low error, low complexity solutions are not. Due to the principle of parsimony, High complexity solutions should generalize poorly, but low complexity solutions should generalize better. Thus, as the model transitions from low error, high complexity solutions to low error, low complexity solutions, we see a fairly sudden increase in generalization performance. That is, we see grokking. In conclusion, we hope our study has expanded somewhat our understanding of the grokking phenomenon. In future, we believe it would be fruitful to further investigate in what settings explicit regularization is 
and is not required for grokking. In addition, it would be quite interesting to see a theoretical justification for the concealment technique. Perhaps it has something to do with the volume of solutions in high dimensional spaces. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out our paper, Grokking Beyond Neural Networks, an empirical exploration with model complexity, published in Transactions on Machine Learning Research. You can find the link in the description of this video. I'd also like to thank Grant Sanderson of 3 Blue 1 Brown fame for publishing Manum, the library used to animate this video, and Vincent Rubinetti for providing the wonderful music. As you can probably tell, I was heavily inspired by their fantastic aesthetic.